So what do you do when you're impatient like me and you have to wait for hardware to come in before you can finish up your bench? Build some accessories for it. I'm gonna be starting with a Moxon vise. All of this is just scrap wood left over from the build. Um, and then a few other things, you can see one of those I've already started and I've built a couple of work lights that just drop down to my dog holes and they're battery powered and they're great. I use them all the time so I, I made them so that I can just drop them right in the bench and use them. Okay, so what I'm starting off with here, this is all this, this wood is just off cuts, leftovers from when I chopped the legs too short and then a couple other odds and ends. The only thing additional I'm buying that isn't scrap wood is I've picked up two of these wheels, some three quarter all thread and some nuts to go with that. And I'm just gonna go with some pretty simple hardware there. I think the wheels were 20 bucks a piece from McMaster car and then the all thread was just a couple bucks to pick that up. Otherwise, I've got some material here. Um, the, what was left after I cut these two short was perfect for the jaws of the moxin vise. And then I'm going to glue up a, a top for it. This is going to have a top so that I can lay out my, uh, my dovetails more than just cutting them. I'm going to start with getting everything cut down to, to shape where it needs to be and getting a, a glue up done for the top. Once the glue cured on the top, I started this one off by cutting it to size of my crosscut sled. I also cut the front jaw at the same time since the two should be the exact same length. It's worth noting, however, that the rear jaw is not the same length and I'm going to cut that one separately. The next step will be to cut two sliding dovetails into the top, but before I do that, I remove as much of the waste as I can with a dado stack. This just makes it easier to run the dovetail bit through the top later on. I will actually have to take two passes for each dovetail slot. I start with the outside edge and cut that on both sides before resetting the fence for the inside edge. I also have to switch my feed direction for the second pass since the material will be removed on the opposite side of the bit. Next I set up my router table for cutting the dovetail on the two base supports. I use an off cut to test the fit, making small adjustments and retesting until I have the perfect fit. I got this dialed in and ready to go right about the time my daughter walked into the shop. We have two cameras going. Yeah, the phone's still recording, so. I expect to be on your YouTube channel now. Yeah. Wish granted, I guess. So, getting back to it, since everything was dialed in, I went ahead and cut my two dovetails. So next up are more dovetails. This time it's dovetail slots in the top. I used the same basic process of removing the bulk of the waste before routing the dovetail slots, and I used the table saw again, but a quarter inch router bit would have worked just as well. With the waste removed, I routed the dovetail slots back at the router table. The rear vise jaw is cut to have two feet that will be used to clamp the moxin vise down to the workbench. I wanted a nice curve in the transition to the feet, so I decided to cut that curve by drilling it out with a Forstner bit. Then I made two cuts at the table saw before finishing the cuts over at the bandsaw. I could have just cut this at the bandsaw, or with a jigsaw for that matter, but this method just made for the cleanest edges and reduced the amount of cleanup I had to do with the spindle sander.
I left the base supports oversized because I wasn't sure exactly how deep those dovetail slots would end up being. I could have approached this in a couple different ways, but I decided to dry assemble the base, place the rear jaw in place, and then mark and trim the base supports. Once I verified my height was correct, I moved on to cutting the tenons in the end of the supports. I did this with a dado stack at the table saw, and since I'm going to be fitting my mortises to the tenon instead of the other way around, I didn't have to worry about perfecting the height. Before I could mark out my mortises, I needed to get the base supports glued up. Watching this now, I realized that I glued up the entire length of the dovetail and I didn't leave any room for wood movement. Since this top isn't that big, it probably won't be an issue. At least I hope not, but I guess I'll see. While that glue up cured, I took care of drilling out both the front and rear vice jaws for the threaded rod. The rear vice jaw is just a straight hole, but the front vice jaw does need those holes slightly elongated to prevent it from binding as I move it in and out. I also took the opportunity to cut a bevel on the outside top edge of the front vice jaw. This just provides clearance for the saw while cutting. To mark out the mortises, I decided to give Mike Pekovich's tape trick a try. Don't say that too fast. I marked out the mortises with a knife and then pulled away the area that will be the mortises. I drilled out as much of the mortises as I could at the drill press and then cleaned up the mortise with a chisel. I have to say, I really liked this method and it worked out well. The final pieces to be made are two blocks that will act as supports for the threaded rods. They will also have the nuts mortised into them which will capture the nut and keep it permanently in place. Again, I drilled out as much waste as I could before finishing the mortises off with a chisel. I bought my threaded rod at my local home store and it came in a three foot length that I had to cut down to size. But since then, I found 10 inch lengths available from McMaster car, which would have made things a little bit easier. The handles themselves get installed and I also added a large fender washer. Finally, I sanded the whole thing down and glued on some rubberized cork to the vice jaws. Leather would also work well for this. I just decided to go with the rubberized cork since it's what I have on the rest of the bench. I used hide glue to attach it since I'll probably eventually need to replace this and the hide glue is reversible. Notice that the call I'm using here is covered in packing tape. I found that the hide glue will bleed through the rubberized cork a little bit and I didn't want the call being glued on as well.
also made up this piece that is drilled out to accept the studs of two dovetail slides. This will allow me to keep the pieces square to the front while marking out the pins of my dovetails. And of course, I couldn't resist and just had to try it out. I do have plans for this available on my website if you'd like to build it yourself. I've decided to make a lot of my plans available and I'm going to be adding them over the course of the next few months, including my blanket chest, the buffet cabinet for my first videos, and of course, for my workbench. Here you can see what that extra piece in the side is for. And you can also see that the front of the vise is actually a, about an eighth of an inch to a quarter inch shorter than the rear vise jaw. And that was just so that I had a little room in there to see and so that I can get in there and mark. And it's pretty obvious in this shot right here. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll be getting back to my workbench in the next video and finally wrapping that build up. I hope to see you again for that one and thanks for watching.